Here in this video, we are going to solve a problem. The problem is like this. There is a circuit, you can see. And you want to calculate the potential difference across the capacitor of the circuit. Here is the capacitor C. You want to calculate the capacitor of potential difference across the capacitor. So if you need to know the capacitor's potential difference, let us see how does the current get distributed. So from here, positive plate of the battery current starts. After reaching this junction, the current will split here. Some current will go like this some current will go like this i2 that i2 after coming here has to split between this and this capacitor but you assume that this capacitor is a static capacitor which is fully charged therefore it doesn't allow any of the current through that further therefore it is going to be like a dead limit of the circuit and no current flows through this capacitor as well as this uh, 3 ohms resistance so for the kind of a calculation of the current distribution, these two elements are actually dead elements in the circuit because capacitor is stomach full and it's not allowing any flow of the further charge. So I can ignore both that elements. So I2 after reaching this junction will go only towards this three ohms. That I1 and I2 will join here and becomes the total current and it will reach back to the negative plate of the battery that's how the current is going to flow so if i have to find out the total resistance if i have to draw an equivalent circuit of that for the just for the sake of calculating the total resistance i can draw an equivalent circuit as this three and this three of course three ohms and three ohms this 3 ohms I am referring this and then this 3 ohms I am referring this one and then connected to the battery 15 volts this is how it is so you can imagine a shadow capacitor though they doesn't uh, pass any of the current through them just for the sake of the part of the problem on the top of that but they are not participating in the flow of the current in the circuit. So this three and this three are in series obviously because current after coming from this point will split here as uh, I1, here as I2. The same I2 will go to this three ohms. So that's the currents are same that three and three are in series. So their effective resistance is three plus three, six ohms. So if you draw again an equivalent circuit, it will be like uh, 6 ohms at the bottom there is a 3 ohm so this 6 ohms is the resultant of these 3 in and 3 in series and this 3 ohms is this one and of course there is another 3 of course at the bottom there is a 15 volts uh, battery and uh, yeah, there is some capacitor though they are not participating in any of the flow of the circuit. Now this 3 and 6 are in parallel. So the effective resistance in parallel R parallel is R1, R2 by R1 plus R2. That is 6 into 3 by 6 plus 3. That is 18 by 9. That is equal to 2 ohms. So this entire result combination is having resistance of 2 ohms for the 2 ohms this 3 ohms is in series because it's passing the total current so the resistance total of the circuit r total is 2 plus 3 5 ohms i know the resistance total i know the voltage i can calculate current now i equal to v by r v is 15 resistance total is 5 so the total current that's going to pass in the circuit is 3 amperes therefore through this 3 ohms that entire current will pass through this 3 ohms 3 ampere current is passing through this 3 ohms 
and that current 3 amperes is shared across these 3 and this 6 that means I1 and I2 together if you look at the diagram I1 plus I2 equal to 3 amperes you know I1 is across I can give the names to this point say PQ I2 is across R S Q this I1 this I2 together is 3 amperes but you know across RSQ this 3 ohms and this 3 ohms are in series so the currents are same so I can say uh, this 3 and 3 combination 6 and this 3 are in parallel therefore current is shared across them as current as they are in parallel voltage is constant I is inversely proportional to R I1 by I2 is R2 by R1 that is if you consider this as an R2 and this as an R1 6 which is a combination of this and this 1 is to 2 so the total current I that is 3 ampere is shared as 1 is to 2 in this in reverse to that of the resistance so here the resistance is only 3 ohms so 2 amperes current will go here the resistance is 3 plus 3 6 ohms therefore 1 ampere current will go this 1 and 2 becomes 3 and join here and becomes a 3 ampere current that we have calculated hope you understood so the current is distributed as 1 ampere 1 ampere in between RS and uh, SQ and 2 amperes across PQ. Now you know how does the current is distributed. Now the potential drop across this capacitor or across this 3 ohms is not having any kind of significance because it is not passing any current because capacitor is full in its capacity it is not allowing the flow of the charge. You can clearly see this capacitor and this resistor combination is in parallel with this 3 ohms and this 3 ohms. So if I name these points as T also, I would like to say therefore potential drop across capacitor is potential drop across this point SQ plus potential drop across this point QT between these two because C and 3 ohms set is in parallel with 3 and 3 ohms so the potential is same in parallel combination what is the potential drop across the points SQ VSQ is equal to I have a simple formula IR I across this is equal to I across that is equal to we have calculated that as 1 ampere resistance is 3 V across uh, uh, ST is again IR I here is equal to 3 amperes like we have calculated and the resistance is sorry 3 amperes and the resistance is also equal to 3 amperes so 3 and 3 9 volts so the total voltage across capacitor is substituting in the formula V along SQ is 3 V along ST is 9 that's equal to 12 volts so the potential drop across the capacitor is uh, 12 volts probably you can relook into the problem revisit the problem again if you have not got it in the first glance because a lot of concepts are involved the first big concept involved is uh, when capacitor is in steady state no current flows through it that's the most important point 
that you need to get while you are solving this problem that's the most important point all further is something like a general current electricity kind of concepts that we are handling right okay thank you for watching